always change. So we're changing Eddie carries once again. That's something to be noted. Betty still not playing. And JDG here running the usual roster that you'd expect. JDG with Chushal behind them. The big coaching change. Uh, Chushal previously on suiting before. Now coming over to JDG as, well, you didn't ban out Zoe. This is probably <laughs> sad. <laughs> Your gals are good, Zoe. Yeah, I want to see how Yagao finally shapes up on this Zoe pick. He's honestly had a couple of off games on the champion already, but all being said and done, this has been his go-to champion, by far his best champion throughout all of these years, starting through 2018. So I'm glad to see him on it. Um, against Rogue Warriors, I think playing with range and poke is actually a pretty decent idea. And what I'm actually really um, excited about for Loken is he doesn't have, actually have to pivot toward Kai'Sa or... Um, or Vayne all the time. I feel like mm. in this meta, in patch 11.2, he can actually still go for Senna or go for Varus. Those two picks are much more utility focused. I feel like he would be more comfortable on them. I mean, Clement, are you just sad now because you set yourself up for the point, but he just locked into Felios and Thresh? Yes, I'm very sad. I'm trying to ignore <laughs> that. <laughs> I love you like, you know what? I'm going to get through this point. I don't care that he's picked up a Felios and, and Thresh. We're just going to go through it. But, you know, still a safe bottom line, a, a bottom line rather that has the potential and pairs up quite nicely at the very least. You're right about the 80 carry pick, so we'll see if he pivots throughout the series. But it is Michi who's decided just to opt in for the... Uh, oh, man, this pirate. Samira. Oh, Samira, thank you so much. I don't know why. You just started saying Senna, and I thought, yeah, Senna. But uh, against Thresh, that would have been some cool story. At the very least, bottom line setup, Clement. Now, walk through the jungle because we have none for both of these teams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not a lot of options here. The main one, probably Pantheon, still up and uh, uh, available for Haro. But I would say Haro is actually much closer to a Graves player uh, compare, compared to a Pantheon. He uh, really likes ganking uh, for his lanes. Uh, he, he has to play a solo carry role, so probably not going for the Gorge Drinker line, but going for another AD carry. We have seen things like Kindred and Graves for him, for him work out. Um, on the other hand, for JD Gaming, I think they're just looking for a little bit more frontline to beef up their composition. They had the hyper carry core in Aphelios and Thresh already locked in, a good poke, and lots of range coming in from uh, Yagao. And right now, they are probably just looking at something like the Orn and, uh, you know, another frontline jungle to kind of set things in stone. Okay, well, Orn hasn't been banned away. You've got a lot of the global pressure that's taken by RW. And on that, they're like, well, what are we going to pick out for our own jungle? Haro loves graves. graves. You know, he's one of the more successful Graves in the league. But Kanavi, you know, his response being the Lilia, it's pretty stock and standard if it gets locked in. I do like the Graves. I think Haro is probably the only Graves that I would uh, give this him this champion with a bit of confidence. We did hear in the previous interview with Twyla that Graves actually has a super low win rate. He's currently only at 27% in the LPL. So he's a very difficult champion to master where you constantly need to be pushing into the enemy jungle. But on Rogue Warriors team composition, I think it makes a lot more sense because they love to play double AD carry. And in fact, they're going to be the ones that are looking at the Orn combo right now. Uh, JD Gaming, they've added a lot more catch tools here. They do have the Lilia Swirl Seed that can go across the map. They do have Camille Split Push into catch as well with the Hextech Ultimatum. But overall, I would say that this is more of a confidence oh. pick. They're not going for the standard top side front line for Yagao and for Loken. They're actually just trying to play through all points on the map at the same time. Uh, I was going to say, this feels like JDG have drafted so many winning lanes, right? We know mid, we know top is going to be quite fine for the Camille past the stage where Orn does assassin-like damage. But bottom lane as well feels like the most volatile lane as it should be in Season 11. Yeah, I don't think bot lane is necessarily winning for the side of Samiria plus Leona. If the Thresh mm. is on point, Leona really can't find the engage that she wants to. <laughs> However, uh, Rogue Wars are expected to fold very heavily into the bottom side with the Orn teleport and things of that nature. Well, I, I honestly see JD Gaming's composition as being a little bit cocky. This is a very confident composition that which they can play through multiple areas. And honestly, if you look at their comp, there's essentially four carries on the team. They, they're really looking at, uh, you know, spreading their resources. They're not trying, they, they don't feel they necessarily have to focus on a single point on the map whatsoever. And, you know, for a team at JD Gaming standing with their caliber of talent, this is passable. Yeah, but they have to perform up to those expectations. And Clement does feel like the snowball is going to be the main point of concern here for JDG because there are good elements of scaling with the Orn, with the Samira Oriana, you know, the ability to teamfight later on. 
feels like it's going to get easier for Rogue Warriors. I'll, I'll quiz you more about it as we get into this because RW versus JDG, people would be looking at this from a, a piece of paper and saying, this shouldn't be competitive. But JDG are currently two and three. They're below the cutoff of playoffs before we get into the Chinese New Year. And they need to get some wins on the board. Otherwise, our confidence is going to drop. And you might see a world where JDG don't make playoffs in spring. That's a very real possibility if they can't pick it up. Where Rogue Warriors already one and six. They're just trying to survive right now and not sit at the bottom of the table. And that means getting a win versus JDG while they're weakened. Uh, a lot of good talking points running into this series, Clement. And as we're getting closer towards Chinese New Year, the decorations go up and we enter Summoner's Rift. Now, Clement, walk me through more about what RW want to do because you already talked about the cocky composition from JDG, to use your words, but RW can play defensive and they have good elements of scaling and ability to five on five. Rogue Warriors, whenever you pick Samira, it's all about the Samira lane. Samira is a Feast or Famine champion. We've seen this a lot in terms of the LPL. She's only currently at a 31% win rate because most teams can't snowball her from start to finish. But if she gets there, she absolutely dominates the entire game. So to be expected, we should see Haro starting on the top side going bot really early. We should see Ziv be willing to teleport anytime there is action in the bot side. And for them to just snowball Michi. That's the way you have to play when you draft Samira. Okay. Wait for the snowball themselves as well. We can talk more about scaling as we go throughout the game. I think early on, not the most important topic, especially since we see the lane starting to play out. Uh, Jungler's starting on the opposite side. And just note that we are seeing a Lilia from Kanavi again, one of his favorite champions. Haro's favorite is the Graves. So good comfort for both these junglers to kick us off. And it does feel like we could be left with Kanavi to move up to the top side as... Ignore that engage, that's not too much for now. Good trades onto Chocho. Further to my point, Kanabi will end up in a place where he's up there for Ziv, up there for the topside scuttle, and to give his solo lanes a bit of priority. Really good Guardian coming out from Luma. He's on point, so nothing comes of the Chocho engage. This is what we've saw from previous lanes that Thresh does cancel out a lot of the pressure that Leona can throw at you until Leona hits level 6. Uh, he can flay away the Eclipse, uh, he, but he can't deal with the ultimate. Oh, nice trade there. A Zenith Blade, just walks sorry. In. No, it's okay. We, Clement, you said Blade. We had you there. Uh, Forge <laughs> getting traded half health has to use his pots. And that just gives Yagawa a really good point. He's picked up a Prowler's Claw. Now, I'm not sure why, but it's... it's I'm not sure. It's better than Redemption, but only just. Uh, that's 11.2, baby. So that's going to give him a good chunk of damage and 11... 15% uh, extra damage onto the target. That's actually yeah. quite a lot if you think that's about the gang situation. Level 3 Zoe's gonna feel good. Sure is. But this is something that we've seen consistently from most of our Lilia players. You fast clear the bottom side, you hit level 3 off of 3 camps, and you just go into the mid lane for a good gank. And w what I love about this play is that it really guarantees you priority in your mid lane because you're throwing that gank in, and a lot of times that allows you uh, to go into the enemy jungle as well. So as a Lilia, she's not a very good ganker early on. She doesn't have that hard crowd control until level six. Yeah. And what you're looking for is just a power farm early game. So mid lane priority matters to you a lot. This is the pathing that we've been seeing very, very frequently from most of our Lilias in the LPL. Gives her a, a, a good time to back as well after this. As you can see, it was Hacker doing the same. It's clear for clear, but, oh, sorry, Haro. We just came out of an E-Star series, so you have to let me apologize to you. As Kanavi comes up, gets a free Krug camp. So he will be up, but he'll be slow in resetting on the map. Depends on how quickly Kanavi can get the camp and get out. Yep, yeah, but uh, Haro at this point definitely knows about it. We just saw Rogue Wars actually question mark ping the Krugs on JD Gaming's side. So they should be very aware that there's a 2v2 into the top lane. And we are seeing Zoom come out very, very far ahead in these trades. Yeah. No, Ziv, we characterize him as a punching bag. He is kind of that blue collar top laner that just takes the punishment, but always shows up in team fights. Uh, but what we have seen is against the top of the league, sometimes he just collapses. <laughs> we have seen that against Bin, uh, against uh, the Shy. Definitely his lane did not hold up. So there are points in the game where I feel like Haro might need to throw Ziv some love and just make sure that his top laner isn't irrelevant. Get him to the point where he can actually participate in these fights, right? You know, Orn can absorb a lot of pressure, fall behind a lot, and it won't matter. As Gravitum used, Blue Mount doesn't get in position for the death sentence, though, and just knows that the Blade Well can come out. Stop that. 
And JDG still pushing in. An aggressive lane to be sure. One that we knew was going to get ahead. And by about five CS after this wave crashes in, if even that. So Loken and Loom out doing a good job to start the game. I don't think Rogue Warriors are going to be able to find a kill until level six at the least, like we were talking yeah. about. It's very Flag. difficult, like right there, the flay Dub goes in Double Gravitum Flash. Okay, we're matching here with the Death Sentence. Haro coming in as well. Gravitum needs to come in a second time. The Flash Burnt, they want to kill Lumao. End of the line, the Blade Well as well. Flay back, but it's still First Blood. Giving it to Haro as Yagao comes in this trade. Not going to be good. That Trouble Bubble connects, so. And they're on the wrong side of the map. Zoom flying in, wants to sweep them, but he has no mana. Heals up with a pot. One more tick necessary. Flash oh. Burnt, Paddle Star blocked. Haro low, Shockwave pulls them back, but Yagao Gal picks up his first kill. Kanavi's in as well. And Rogue Warriors have walked into the den of beasts. Kanavi swells once, a second time. And Bambi kills you. What a weird timeline. <laughs> uh, Rogue Warriors, uh, that's the thing about the Samira pick and why she has such a low win rate in the LPL. I feel like her playstyle is way too telegraphed. You look yeah. at what Rogue Warriors have, they're actually running cleanse in their own bot lane. So they can't really do anything 2v2. They need... Haro to force, and Chocho oh. overplayed his hand by Lilting quite Lullaby, Trouble Bubble, Yagao's coming in, he burns the oh, flash no. of that Zoe already, ladies and gentlemen, in a weird position though, is his double flash to commit, or rather just the one, Yagao should be going down here, Chocho and Michi want the kill, Ziv's teleported down, and Michi will get the kill in the end, 2-1-2, one, and two. I'm not sure if there was a shutdown there, Clement, but at the end of the day, it's still a trade, jungler for mid. I think there should have been, just based on the kill and assist, but maybe not, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, like, I, I felt like Rogue Warriors throughout this play, it's a 4v2 trade, definitely still very much in favor of JD Gaming. And the thing is, it's uh, it's just too hard to to play the map when you only have one point that you're really going for. You know, teams can definitely expect it. Chocho overplayed his hand by going back onto the engage once the play went down. Really well done by Lumao. This is how the matchup should work out there. He even lands the hook after the flash. That's how good Lumao is on this one. And it just takes way too much time for Lumao to actually fall here. Two teleports coming for JD Gaming. Unable to match on Ziv's side because he actually had zero mana at that point. I was looking at the top side. He wouldn't be any use here in this fight either. So they lose multiple members. I'm um, not sure if Michi actually goes down here. I believe he does, he does. go down. So, you know, it, it just wasn't worth that single kill throughout this trade. Uh, for man, Rogers. Clement... You can't give your gal Zoe. You know, as we watch Kanavi finish off this kill, there's a reason. Like, he's one of the good Zoe players in the league. It's his best champion alongside his Twisted Fate. And your gal just showing up really big, even though he dies in the end. He's 2 1 and 2. But Zoe's got a lost chapter and teleported right on the dime. Like, there wasn't any hesitation for him to join the play. Definitely wasn't. And this is part of the draft as well. Zoe is expected to have priority over Orianna in the early game. Yep. And this entire way, we have seen Zoom actually just pushing in Ziv. So, you know, it was a pretty easy teleport play for JD Gaming to make. They don't lose much on their waves whatsoever. And it looks like the skirmish is just going to continue. Next tech ultimatum is it too early. Kanavi's not in yet. He has the Lilting Lullaby available, but he's waiting in the brush, thinking that Zoom was just trying to solo trade, making it a bit of a con. But uh, Ziv Kanavi knows. Has he definitely knows. He's just sitting at turret, and Kanavi has to back away. So Herald's there. Might just trade it in the end for Hara getting Dragon. Good win on the side of JD Gaming. I will say, though, this is a trade that they do prefer most of their games. JD Gaming is one of those teams that does like to have very high Herald control rate and will yep. give up early Drakes for Herald. So I, I think we will see them try to go into the top. Wow. Box, Death Sentence used. Hara down in the bottom lane, though. And Smokescreen going down, but... That is the ultimate use, and I believe Loken either recently burned the summoners or it was from the previous trade, at the very least. I think it was the previous trade. Harold's going to go down while Dragon was traded, and that'll just be the ultimate place down in the end by JDG's bottom lane. Once again, we're going to see a mid-jungle roam coming in from uh, JD Gaming towards the bot side. Rogue Warriors, everyone has to back off this one, and Zoom is getting zoned out of his wave here, so... You know, honestly, JD Gaming could play through so many different avenues. I do prefer just going into the top side a little bit more. Even though that Rogue Warriors is uh, trying to over-index into, into the bot lane, I feel like their bot lane is actually holding up okay. And, and Clement, this is why the Herald might be a better trade. Because you have three winning lanes. You can put it down anywhere. The ability to get this map into your state is so much easier. 
The zoom taking a trade here just bops up Ziv. <laughs> and you've got so many options if you're Kanavi here in this early game. Wow, that was actually a pretty fun interaction. We saw Camille use the Searing Charge and actually stop... Uh, no, no, use a hook shot to stop the Searing yeah. Charge come out from the Orn. So Orn doesn't actually get the knockup or the charge damage. You know, the cool thing is you use Orn's, you know, pillar to, to get the hook shot off as well. That's the best part, so... Yeah. Uh, actually saw it by... I think Zoom was the person who actually showed it against the Orn matchup, so... Again, showing to be one of the best laners in the top lane of the LPL. Uh, he's pretty close to getting his first item as well, Clement. And so I, I feel like this is going to be a game where we have to worry about the sign leg Camille and what she does, especially since it's going to be a Divine Sunderer. You notice that we do have the Phage there instead of the Hearthbound Axe. So mm. it's going to do a lot to Ziv in the sides. A lot more split push oriented in this one. Um, and I do want to talk about the Samira pick just a little bit more. We have seen Samira actually lose a lot in priority now that Senna has come out and been one of her hardest counters in lane just with the range advantage and the ability to walk away with the uh, camouflage and the point and click stun, uh, the root that uh, Senna does have on her kit. So I do expect Samira to continue to drop in priority and right now the only team that really focuses on her in the LPL I would say is Rare Adam. Rare Adam with the iBoy is probably the only one that has continued to uh, hard prioritize yep. this. Wow! been counted oh yeah cow nicely done just uses the proto belt picked up to dodge away from the shockwave he heals up remember he's got unsealed spell book so he doesn't mind that trade at all Forge. Ooh, naughty boy swell seed coming through and won't hit him there for the lilting lullaby that was just beautiful to watch yeah, and JD Gaming's bot lane is holding out a defensive position so damn well. Look at their wave. It's right outside of turret range, but not uh, not stacking up. This is exactly what you want to do if you're a defensive bot lane. You want to hold it at that position. The enemy comes in, but they still need the bot lane to actually use abilities to push the wave all the way in. You're going to know about that beforehand. You're going to be in a relatively safe position. And and look at Loken and Lumal. They've been sitting in a 2v3 for like a minute and a half. And there's nothing Rogue Warriors can do. They just couldn't get the wave position in a correct state to actually make any use of it. Kind of sad, right? Um, Clement, I realize I turned into, you know, it's like I'm getting out of, steam, getting out of all that, giving myself the best opportunity <laughs> before I turn into a, a chat favorite. <laughs> okay, okay. So, uh, unfortunately, Hysterics might be fired for the third time on broadcast. Oh. It's going to be me solo casting right now. <laughs> so Rogue Warriors is trying to find some purchase into the bot lane. They are at a 2k gold deficit. But, uh, you know, this team is uh, very, very powerful in team fights. I do want to see what they can do. And Haro is currently setting up for a 2v1 onto the top lane. Zoom's already taken away one tower plating. Is stunned down. Haro just going to wait around to see if Zoom wants to play aggressive here. They walk out and Kanavi, uh, definitely a suboptimal herald here. He doesn't put it anywhere. Drops it in the middle of his own jungle to force out the bot lane. I don't really understand what happened right here. I definitely felt like uh, that herald should have gone towards the top side with Zoom already pushing in his wave. This is going to give ample time for, uh, uh, for Rogue Warriors to respond to this one. And they are going in. The Herald Charge is going to go down. And uh, it, and production actually just remote controlled and shut down my PC. Uh, hey, hey guys, you guys are supposed to fix uh, Hysterics PC. Uh, hi, hi, this is my PC. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, oh, my God. Uh, production just actually cut my computer off. So they... Uh, it's, it's the wrong PC, but I'm back and I'm back. JD Gaming, they... They, they make their way back into to the Dragon Pit. And they do get three turret platings. So a bit of an oopsie from Kanavi, but it doesn't matter. They're still going to go and set up around Drake. Rogue Warriors are positioning for this. Both top laners do have their teleports here. And Zoe doesn't find any poke. So interestingly enough, even with the big advantage JD Gaming has acquired in the bot lane, they do decide better of this. And they just back off with the turret plating gold. We're going to see still some more action coming in. I like Chocho's position. He's going to go over the wall onto Lurimal. The damage is coming through, but Chocho has to flash away because he does not have that uh, perfect timing on him at all. And uh, really good W coming in from Michi. He's actually able to get away the Felios ultimate. Zoe does get the Drake. 
but it looks like Yagao's gonna fall down. Oh, it's gonna take a while. He actually still is alive. How does he do that? He's standing on 100 HP and he gets out and then Zoom comes in and finishes off the kills. JD Gaming winning all over the map. Forge, he can't get away. No one's able to get, no one's able to, 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 to live here and JD Gaming walk away with everything. Still going in onto Michi. Michi able to get out, but uh, does have to burn a flash for that one. And a massive win on JD Gaming's part. Clement, I think hey, I'm back. Maybe, hey, maybe hello, lyrics taking the internet. I miss you so much. Hey, how was it? What happened? Oh, I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. It's hard, you know, casting from home. But I had some cool Pringles. I ate some food while we were going through that. I wasn't able to watch, but now I'm going to do the replay because I'm the color caster for just this moment. So oh, Rogue Warriors... No, 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 he so take, much take a, time. I felt back. like Yagao was definitely going to die there. He survives on 100 HP, and then JD Gaming just cleans up Rogue Warriors. Oh, it was really sad. Just great play on Yagao. He actually gets the Drake, too. Oh. Moment didn't even let me cut. I wanted to color cast that brother, but you just took over. That's fine. Oh, sorry. Never I thought mind. that was my job. Oh, no, 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 no. You're Dude, not getting I any of my Pringles. I thought you were fired. No. I was so <laughs> nervous, Rhea. <laughs> why? Why would I be fired, Clement? Come on, I mean, why would watch. you hire a play-by-play? -play? They can't cast. What do you mean? True. I've been casting the whole time. You're back. It's the first You're time back. I've had internet issues. <laughs> Clement, you had internet issues in the rehearsal for me. <laughs> oh. I don't know. I'm, I'm just look. glad you're here. I, I'm, I'm glad to be back. It's it's almost a 5k gold lead as I come back to this one. I'm not too surprised that JDG were finding windows, considering that Rogue Warriors are kind of running out of options, right? Like, we already talked about how scaling goes. I, I want you to walk me through JDG a little bit more, because the winning lanes have turned very, very favorable for JDG. And we're one and a half items in with, like, a Camille side lane and a Felios, Zoe, who can really just play against this team, no problem. Yeah, I, I wouldn't really characterize this as scaling. It's just, is Samira ahead of the curve or behind the curve? And right now, the answer is she's very, very far behind. So, as a result, Rogue Warriors don't really have a great option to deal enough damage to take down guys like Zoom. Yigao's perfect timing use has been really, really on point throughout this series. And, uh, you know, they're pretty much running the map right now. 5k gold advantage, no one to stop the split push. Ravenous Hydra already completed here and the jungle going road to JD Gaming. It just feels like JD Gaming oh are just waiting for the finishing God. touches. Oh my God, save Chocho. Box plays down, range from Loken. Swell Seed could get the Lilting Lullaby, Ooh. but they're interested in the burst. Soul Flare wasted Flay as well. Chocho in a slow death. Have you been waterboarded before? That torture method, method felt like that kill. Chocho going down, call the Forge God wasted and Rogue Warriors half in the bin. Yeah, and Ziv had to roam so far away from his own tower to get that play. Zoom's still playing very conservatively, though. It's not actually going to look for more damage onto that one. Well, I think we're getting to GG Go Next territory, Clement. What do you reckon? Am I fair in saying it's that? It's pretty this... close. If you don't win out on the Samira Gambit, it's just not going to work. She's yeah. very feast or famine because she relies a lot on getting ahead of the curve, dealing more damage, and getting more lifesteal with her ultimate. If that virtuous cycle doesn't work for her, then she just doesn't do anything. In a sense, she's she feels a lot like Vladimir, where, you know, you have the, like, the AP into HP scaling thing. It's like, if you do more damage, you heal more, you're more unkillable, and all that good stuff coming out from Samira. But on the flip side, if that cycle doesn't get going, you're just kind of stuck. Yeah, and it, it feels like a die straights at this point. Again, I could talk about items for JDG, but you can all see it on your screen. Note that there's a five, almost 6,000 gold lead at 19 minutes in the game. And JDG are 40 seconds away from picking up a free ocean dragon from moving towards an ocean soul. And we're going to get a Baron at one point with an Aphelios who can take it down so quick. So it feels like we're just yeah. going to wait for this next slip up of Rogue Warriors and JDG to capitalize. A lot of damage on this Aphelios already with two items completed. I uh, like what Rogue Warriors are doing right here. They're basically goading JD Gaming to engage on them. Bowling ball. Oh, two people. 
Lilting Lullaby. Now, Bellows Breath can stop this, but not in time. The hook comes in anyway, and Chocho goes in while his team's half asleep. Zip just gets uppercut into the face, what? and that's the fine Sunderer for you. The Orn is not fed, but JDGR. Kanavi in position to come in for a three-man, but Lilting Lullaby was used. Swell Seed hits a wall, and that's how easy it is when Rogue Warriors wait for you to come to them. There's, how did oh, no. Zip go oh, down no. that quickly, Oh, no. Haro. Oh, yeah, Gal. Okay. Well, Orn's not tanky enough, Clement. I, I'm just at a loss for words how fast an Orn could die in that situation. Luma with a great death sentence gets Orn in place, but just the damage coming out of Loken and Yagao, way too much to handle for Rogue Warriors right now. They're going to get the Drake on JD Gaming's side and pretty much just walk away with this game already close to a 10k advantage. This is vintage JD Gaming. They yeah. either win big or they go home. <laughs> Let's talk what we talked about in the segment, right? Where JDG are one of the only two teams, including Rare Adam, that have only had zero twos or two zeros. Right now, JDG, yep. you know, they win fast or lose for fast, as Clement was just saying. They do seem like the personification of MLXG himself. They yeah. always go for team fights. They never back out of any fights whatsoever. And that does produce quite high variance in their results, depending on whether you should actually take the team fight or not. <laughs> I mean, this is a team that we, we know we've been criticizing. This is a team that have been underperforming when it counts, but JDG here in this first game against RW, what we ask for is to see them in peak performance before we go to Chinese New Year. Remember that JDG right now are two and three, and that's not good enough for what should be a top two team. And I say top two because I put them second, only under top esports thinking, well, we have Shie and Mystic in this team now. There's no way they're any worse than what they were in 2020 spring, but lo and behold, it's been a slow start. Yeah, and uh, the funny thing is that Shias has only played one game so far. Mystic has not played a single game in the LPL just yet yep. of this split. And Kanavi might be in a little bit of trouble. Let's see. Hexflash over the wall. The Dark Passage not taken. He goes Golden Call. The Forge got to line him up onto the jungler. Lilting Lullaby not used in time. And Kanavi gets shut down, but Loken still wants Ooh. to ult through. It's a three-man caliber, but Bladewell stops it. Really nice W from Michi to halt the play. Beautiful play by Michi. That's the second of Felios ultimate that she's basically taken away out of thin air with that Blade World like you were mentioning. So, you know, they get a defensive play. They get a kill. But in the meantime, just oh. too many carries for JD Gaming. They have four people that could count as a primary carry on this team. And they're yep. all fed. So we need to see more pickoffs. It's good to see Kanavi going down. Rogue Warrior is finding some kind of optimization with... Uh, some point of this game. What I'm really trying to say is that for JDG, you know, they have to get caught out many more times. We have to see Rogue Warriors fight for an ocean soul that they have no business getting near at the moment. And Haro, oh, he wants to sneak. <laughs> Does them. this mean he's going? Nah, yeah. Okay. I okay. was a little bit confused. I'm thinking like, Haro, are you really that audacious? Guess he's not. like, no, I'm not even going to go for Drake, for Ocean Soul. I'm just going to go straight Lumel. for Baron. <laughs> Flashes. Ooh. Whoa. Dark Passage waiting for the Flay. Death Sentence flushed away from as well. <laughs> okay, Lu Mao. What a wild cowboy. Well, he's pretty far ahead. He can afford to do these plays like that. And he does get the Flash out from Haro. So all in all, still a favorable trade on his side. I think Yigal just picked it up as well. So Yigal's ability to be threatening in the side lane, ever present. As JDG pushing up in all three lanes. Look at this across the, across the map. Loken and Lumao pushing mid. Kanavi in the fog of war. Up in the side lane. Yagao and Zoom down bottom. So I really like this spread because JD Gaming realized that Rogue Warriors Engage is very ultimate dependent. If They don't really have quick successions of ultimates that they can throw in multiple lanes. So even if one lane goes down, they're still likely to find uh, chip damage on the other two side lanes. Right now, Rogue Warriors are forming up. They're trying to catch the three-man in mid. Yeah. But look at the the two lanes that uh, Zoe and Camille are going into. They're pushed very, very far into their own towers. And Rogue Warriors know that if they pull the trigger here, they will lose out on their towers. And much, much more. JDG uh, kind of a step away from just pushing in and blowing this game to smithereens for a game one win. Baron sitting up there and waiting. Rogue Warriors, right now, they've got vision on it, and that's keeping them safe and in control to just hold back at these inner turrets, at these inhibitor turrets, pull out a bit of CS and hope for a mistake. Hope these ornaments add a bit more extra layers to the damage 
from these core carries like the Orianna, like especially on Michi, who is only two items strong. So I just want to point out to our viewers that we have had a viewer bug where the ornaments don't really show up on our uh, screen whatsoever, but rest assured they should be there and uh, Ziv is definitely getting value out of them. We just can't see them, so. <laughs> uh, Cle Clement, so the problem is the icon's actually just hard to see. So we do have our first one on Forge. So in the bottom oh. right of, myth of Mythic items, you can see it's a little bit more red than usual and you have like that little square. It's just oh, super it's hard to see, brother. Okay. Oh <laughs> it's, yeah, it, it's, <laughs> it's 360p, sir. <laughs> that's, that's what we're seeing. Hey, I'll keep you updated, all right? Um, no problem, no the, problem. At the very least, it's weird because you're right. We have one for Forge, but it's kind of bugged to not see it on Ziv. And Ziv's the first one who gets it. So assume that the Sunfire Aegis is the upgrade. Remember, you only get one with the Mythics now. Yep. So we'll see it spread across the board and give about a thousand gold value worth of buffs. There's Troll Bubble connects here, but Rogue Warrior's grouping up as five mid. Yeah, this is a little bit too easy for JD Gaming to deal with. They see all five members at this point, and uh, Zoom is also looking for a perfect engage. Chocho has to go in. Yeah, going low though. Kanabi what? dead again. Call the Forge God used down the middle. Rogue Warriors have a numbers advantage. That hook lands on the Forge as Yigal's trying to bring back the fight. They hit Michi, but pulled on back. Down goes Lumao as well. Chocho burnt out. Zoom going golden. JDG one by one. They march into this fight now. Left with a three versus five. Low health bars for Rogue Warriors, but somehow oh, no, they're War. still okay. The burn down from Yagao. It's not over. A two man knockup on the Ziv. Loken there. The shockwave lands, connects, and successfully Rogue Warriors win a fight because JDG threw it away. Oh my god, today has been the day of what epic the? throws. That was so unexpected. JD Gaming were up almost 10,000 gold before that fight. They throw it all away and they trade five members for one. Right. Are you not entertained? I wish I <laughs> lagged out. <laughs> I wish I <laughs> lagged out and I didn't have to see this. I want to go back to my robot people, man. I don't know what's going on. Lilting Lullaby available. Kanami can he get the in? steal? It's low. He's dead. The route Lilting Lullaby. No, he's dead. Oh, I appreciate the commitment, but Rogue Warriors are going to get the Baron. And gold now at only 3,000. Uh, we need to see a replay of that. First was Kanavi going down in the most obvious pivot I've ever seen. They're five man. Drake is up. Where else could they possibly be? Kanavi doesn't manage to hit the Zanias, the first item that he actually bought. And for some reason, JD Gaming still stay around and try to fight this one out. Lumal gets tagged out. Zoom goes in, hits no one, and instantly has to go back into the uh, the stasis mode to, to get out of all of this. And I just don't know what JD Gaming are trying to do here. They're, they're trying to hard force this situation when there's they're down on numbers. Ziv finally hangs around long enough to find the crowd control. They get all of the carries onto the backside, and Zoom falls as well in his own Hextech ultimatum. Holy hell. Today, Clement has been game. something. <laughs> yeah, we have, we a, have game. a game. <laughs> this was such a big... Now, now, look, let's be realistic. Zoom still controls the side waves. Yagao is still popping people, but... Now with the Baron buff, Rogue Warriors can hold to that aggression. They can get more items on the core carries that I was talking about. Michi picked up the kills and a lot of that engage as well. He now has a Five GA and three. Rogue Warriors oh are back God. on the map when they shouldn't be. <laughs> so we've now got a Samira that's in a better position that can contest and deny Loken. This is, this is just so odd to see, you know? It, it's feel like your teacher gave you a makeup test like a, a test to make up for an F, and then you yep. somehow change your score all the way back to an A. Like, Michi was so <laughs> far out of this game that it, it really shouldn't have happened at all. Oh, God, from Ziv. I think he's just trying to, he's trying to do here. Well, at least get some damage down. Assassin Orn puts him to half health, and Ravenous Hydra will be able to heal up, but he's backing away, so the Steric's Gage Shield doesn't pop. And Zoom added a lot of pressure on that bottom side turret, and gives JDG some room to push out mid to reset a little bit, and... Remember that Rogue Warriors with this Baron Plate, it's not going to be huge, but it still put them back in the game. So that's okay. They didn't lose their base. So I, I will say outside of the fact that JD Gaming pretty much walked back into that fight when they were definitely losing members, uh, they, they basically committed to a 3v5 after Luma went down. It is something about this composition that is very highly volatile. 
it's the fact that you don't really have a true tank on the team whatsoever. So yeah. if Rogue Warriors can have their front line in place, they can just route JD Gaming from front to back and steamroll them uh, in a situation like that. This is one of the greatest things about playing a tank is that you can come back from uh, quite terrible situations just because uh, tanks are so effective at soaking damage. That's right. And, you know, Orn is one who does it best in the business. Orn adds so much value to your team and one of the best late game tanks, not only because the items are upgraded, he upgrades his own and can get more gold value than anyone else. We're heading towards the three item Orn at this point and Ziv is level 16. So we've given over a couple of those upgrades. You can see that Typhoon is now given over to Haro. So he gets a bit more ex extra added value. And because you have an Orn on the team, that gold lead doesn't really exist. It's more like 54 to maybe 54.5k. Uh, JDG might hold a small lead, if even that. It's very minor, and it's definitely something that can be erased away by formations. Yep. If you look at the uh, items onto uh, Yagao, he's really good against backline, but he's going to do nothing guard. against this horn. Okay, they get the inner turret costing of the ultimate from Ziv. They back away. Swellsea dodged as well. That's nice because JG are waiting. Look at where Zoom is. He's pushed in the inhibitor turret, but JG are not giving over the engage. They're not letting them back either, Clement. Everyone's here. They know that the jungler's not there either. Zoom's going to get a free inhibitor. For the inner oh. turret, that trade is so worth it. That was really smart from JD Gaming. They back off of their own inner, knowing that the engage is coming from Rogue Warriors. They play the delay game. And Camille is able to sneak away so much from this bottom side. And once again, JD Gaming find themselves with the, uh, you know, the tangible and actual gold lead in this game. Well, okay, we're back. We're back to square one. This is what the Camille's meant to do. And this is just so hard for Rogue Warriors to, you know, push out, get a turret. Because every time they're going to be losing so much more. Uh, especially when the Camille is just going to shred turrets in instantly. So... JDG back into some kind of favorable position. And we're 50 seconds away from Ocean Soul. I didn't mention this before, but after the big fight that came through, Ocean Dragon was picked up by JDG in the end anyway. So they are 40 seconds from Ocean Soul, and that would just change the dynamic again. We do have staggered timers. That means JD Gaming can fight for one objective and then pivot towards the other. They don't have to make a split sacrifice, which basically means that JD Gaming are just going to focus on the first one that comes up on the map. It is going to be the Ocean Soul. And I like what Rogue Warriors are doing. They're going for the catch. Yeah, getting caught out, but slitting Lullaby into the back line. Michi getting low. Hexec Ultimatum lined up in the middle as Zoom's going to use that Sterex Gage onto for the Affiliate Assault. They've cornered them. They've choked them down. Loken going to hit pretty damn hard here as well as the play from Lumao. Michi coming in off the side. He's going to go into GA2. And Rogue Warriors getting hit from so many different angles. It's like a club sandwich, except the bread is stale. JDG have four members left standing. And around the pit, Kanavi, make it five, are going to get the Ocean Soul. Onto Haro, ready for the uppercut. The movement speed there, waiting for one more auto to hit. Gets the uh -huh. sweep, and down go RW. And that's just the entire game to go along with it. Rogue Warriors, I thought they were just trying to hold the ramp against JD Gaming going to the Drake, but they go for the chase further into the jungle and expose their entire backline. Michi couldn't get into that fight.